The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels, then he will take his seat on his throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate men from one another, as the shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you whom my Father has blessed, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for, your, for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you made me welcome. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. In prison, and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothed you, sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you did this to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Next, he will say to those on his left hand, Go away from me with your curse upon you to the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and, and you never gave me food. I was thirsty, and you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you never made me welcome. Naked, and you never clothed me. Sick and prison, and you never visited me. Then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and did not come to your help? Then he will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. And they will go away to eternal punishment and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear sisters and brothers, we celebrate the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, Universal King. <coughs> the first reading speaks about Jesus as the Good Shepherd. The shepherd king. The shepherd is one who tends to his sheep. And the shepherd is driven by lots of love. So this king is a king of love. <clears throat> and that is the king we are here to worship. He loves. He cares. He embraces. And the second reading speaks about the king of sacrifice. Of giving and our Lord is one who gives who sacrifices he is that is king whom we worship and the gospel speaks about the king who judges now you and I are here and he has come to judge us as well and the gospel today speaks about the judgment <clears throat> how he will judge us but his judgment is so different not one of punishment, one of reminding us. <clears throat> he was so much with the poor. And if you see today's gospel, if you feed me, if you give me water to drink, if you clothe me, if you visited me in prison, all that, he was close to the poor. Dear sisters and brothers, have you ever seen the king of this world, any of the king of this world, ever seated and welcome the poor with them. You never see any of the kings of this world among the poor. 
but Jesus is that king. <coughs> now, how is he going to judge us? Now, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 reads, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You, you are the one. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So dear sisters and brothers, each one of us have to ask, am I one who belonged to that royal priesthood, am I holy? Does God possess me very specially? Do I belong to God? Do I belong to Jesus? Is Jesus reigning over me? <coughs> now, <coughs> a few years ago, I visited Taj Mahal. I think some of you may have visited in India, in Agra about two, three hours away from New Delhi. So I visited Taj Mahal at least twice. And this Taj Mahal is a Muslim, Muslim where the tomb of Mumtaz is kept. A magnificent, extraordinary building, one of the seven wonders of the world against the background of that blue sky, amazing. <clears throat> and when you are there, afterwards you have to walk into a few steps underground where the tomb of Mumtaz is laid. It was essentially completed in 1643. <clears throat> and it was built by Shah Jahan. And apparently the architects who built this building had their hands chopped off so that there can never be another building of this nature in the entire world. And Shah Jahan had a lot of children because he had about 14 wives and Mumtaz is the one he loved most. Now when he was arrested by his own son, kept in the prison, in prison, in jail, he requested his son, allow me to be put in a cell where I can look at the Taj Mahal from where I am because that is where my wife is laid, and beautiful, magnificent one. And Aurangzeb, one of his sons, killed all his brothers in order to reign, in order to take control. Even today, people outdo one another, like in North Korea. The reigning president will make sure that nobody takes over him. Because the kings and presidents of this world are so insecure, so much of insecurity, I'm afraid someone will grab my position, someone will take over me. So I make sure that nobody takes this, takes charge. But I am in control. I reign. I am in power. But today, we have a king who has never worried about insecurity that is Jesus and he is telling us in today's gospel you are welcome into my kingdom provided this is what you should do dear sisters and brothers that means you and I are supposed to radiate and glorify God by our lives. And you know, in the tomb of Mumtaz, as you go in, it is a little, a little dark in there, no lights. But there are little rays come in, and those in the tomb, there are a lot of precious stones embedded, intricately woven, so to speak, embedded in the tomb, and it will just shine, it will just illumine with the little radiance of the light. It will just sparkle, so beautiful, different colors of the stone gems that are placed and planted in the tomb. As I was reflecting on this, I was telling myself, 
that each one of you seated here you are the gem you are the precious stone you are the beautiful one you are so delicately designed you are structured amazingly you are so beautiful you are structured in such a way that you are like the precious stone and isaiah chapter 49 verse 16 tells us i have carved you on the palm of my hand because you are so precious because you are so beautiful because you are so amazingly sculptured sculptured you are the sculpture you are that that statue so to speak you are that person who is so beautiful so wonderful and he has carved you on the palm of his hand isaiah tells us dear sisters and brothers i ask you now are you the same beautiful sculpted person god has structured you god has designed you from the moment you were conceived in your mother's womb up to right now are you or have you tarnished yourself so much that you have disfigured this image of god in you you are so beautiful you are so wonderful but why do have if i become so un, not so beautiful i don't want to say you are ugly we have lost that luster we have lost that beauty we have lost that shine why simply because we have not enjoyed that kingdom prevalent within me around me inside me as we continue to sin as we continue to be in anger continue to be jealous continue to talk about others continue to talk about have calumny talk, continue to be filled with disillusionment continue to get upset over little things why are we or continue to be lustful everything and everything that is so negative inside me when i continue to do this that shine that i am will slowly diminish will slowly diminish and how can i enjoy that kingdom don't wait for life after death right now to enjoy that kingdom that has been given to you so that that king may reign in you who is taking charge of you who is controlling you your friend your father your mother your wife your husband your girlfriend your boyfriend who is or some things around you some possessions some status taking charge of you so much it is controlling me so pervasive that i have lost jesus that i have lost that shine dear sisters and brothers allow him to touch you allow him to bring back that shine in your life we are preparing for christmas not long from now what are you preparing for he has to be born inside here we say but let that god capture you your very presence in the church is to want that and he has designed you so beautifully and he has he wants you to reflect his glory he wants you to reflect his glory are you reflecting god's glory in your lives or what are you reflecting it is fine to be beautiful on the outside it is good that we all come nicely dressed up but how about the inside that matters most to him so dear sisters and brothers leave the past behind we all make mistakes never mind today i want to make a change so that tomorrow i will continue to shine let the lord reign in your hearts reflect him to the world around you mirror him to the world around you shine that his glory may be manifested in and through you you know some young people don't like me i mean some others also may not like me 
You know why they don't like me? Someone, some I hear. Because father talks about God. Father is too spiritual in his things that he say. And he speaks about morality. What else must I speak of? Must I speak of Michael Jackson and Lady Gaga? So that he can go Gaga? All that is outside there you can get. It is Jesus. It is Jesus alone. If you are here. Don't come here just because you have to be here. Because I love my Jesus. Because he is my king. Allow him to reign. Isaiah tells us in 49, 16, I have carved you on the palm of my hand. He knows each one of you by name. You think he doesn't know you. Maybe you don't know him. He knows you. And so let us pray for this grace to allow him to touch us so that I prepare myself for Christmas in a very special way and make a difference to the world around me because it is Jesus who reigns. Amen.